What is up, Flutter devs? It's the end of June, the beginning of July, which means it's time for another quarterly update. For those of you who have just recently joined the channel, every quarter of the year, every three months, I stop and create a video where I talk about what I did in the previous quarter and what I plan to do in the next quarter. That way I keep you up to date with what I'm working on and why and how and all those great details. We're at the halfway point of 2021. It feels like just five minutes ago that we were starting the year. Feels like 30 seconds ago that I was doing the last one of these videos, but here we are nonetheless. So let's talk about what I was able to accomplish in the second quarter. Obviously, the big announcement, which brought many of you to the channel, welcome, was the launch of Super Editor, a Flutter-based rich text editor that's currently aimed primarily at Mac OS and the web. However, we are now working on mobile support, which I'll talk about shortly, and it may or may not work for you on Windows or Linux, but eventually we plan to support those as well. The idea here is that Flutter really shouldn't be left out in the cold when it comes to documents, whether it's document rendering or document editing. These are important features, and they are features where the web already excels. So we want to do what we can to bring Flutter up to par with the web so that web developers really can choose Flutter over traditional web technologies. We launched version 010, that's the very first release of Super Editor. Again, this release has support for Mac OS, and it has web support with a few caveats around keyboard entry, because actually there are some issues with Flutter itself with keyboard entry on web. We'll talk more about the future of Super Editor in just a minute. Also, for those of you who have been tuned into the channel for very long at all, you know that all year, I have been working on porting processing over to Flutter. For those of you who are new, what is processing? Processing is about a 20-year-old technology for learning graphics programming or well, visual audio programming. It was originally developed with Java as the language. It includes its own IDE. It includes its own API surface. But you can very quickly and easily create all sorts of interesting graphical experiments and prototypes and works of art. Now, early in the year, I said, I want to bring those same APIs over to Flutter because I would like educators to be able to use the Flutter version of processing without changing their curriculum, with minor adjustments to their code samples so that they can still teach what they're teaching, but they can do it with Flutter. And the idea is that processing itself whether you're using the original version of processing or even there's a something called P5.js, which is essentially a JavaScript web version of processing. But in either of those cases, there is a very big uphill battle to go from learning how to use processing to being able to produce and ship some kind of product to users. I think there's a lot less of a hill to climb if you go from Flutter processing to Flutter app development. So the idea is that if we can get educators using this version of processing, then we will have an easy on-ramp for more developers around the world into Flutter, and we'll have more Flutter app developers after they figure out how to use Flutter processing for their graphics programming and their art projects. What you see here are screenshots of six coding challenges that we did. Each coding challenge is actually a recreation of something that Dan over at the coding train has done either with traditional processing or P5.js. These are kind of sanity checks to make sure that our port of processing actually does what it's supposed to do. If we can recreate what someone has done with regular processing, then it means we're on the right track. There were seven coding challenges in all. This is six of them. And in total, uh, I produced, I think, 23 Flutter processing videos over the last quarter, and I plan to continue those going forward. We'll talk more about the future in just a moment. Also, I think I mentioned this in the last quarter that I started working with a company in the mortgage space. I've continued to work with that company. Uh, I'm now leading all of their app development. Obviously, it's all Flutter-based, and it's also a web product, so we're leaning entirely on Flutter for web, uh, for that company. It's a pretty small startup, so we haven't run into any issues with Flutter for web. Um, but there again, I think it's important to really push the boundaries of Flutter. Now that Flutter 
is on the web. Let's really push it. Let's use it. Let's bring it to production uh, and let's hold it to those, the standards of any other app. So that's I, uh, one last thing. I mentioned that I was working on a, a website about professional flutter practices. I have broken ground on it. I've done some work, but partway through, I decided that really I want to use super editor as the backing technology for this website. I want to use super editor to display the articles and the blog posts. And I want to use super editor to edit the blog posts. So now I've put this on hold for just a little while. Once super editor has all the pieces so I can drop it in, then I'll continue working on this website and maybe sometime in Q3 or sometime in Q4, I'll actually have this website launched where I'll talk about some important practices for building apps effectively with Flutter. But now let's talk about the future. Q3, that's where we are now. We just kicked off Q3. So what am I hoping to do in this quarter? This quarter is going to be a lot of the same stuff because there's a lot of work that's in flight that needs to be completed. I want to get to version 020 of Super Editor. And the two headline features here is one, we're going to support mobile. Like again, right now it's all keyboard stuff for web and desktop. We're going to add mobile into that. The reason mobile wasn't added originally is because the way you interact with mobile, uh, the keyboard system, the spell check system, the composing region system, there's a whole API that you have to work with and integrate to work on mobile, whereas on web and desktop, you can just listen to people typing keys on a keyboard. We're going to integrate that, that text input client. We're going to honor that API, get mobile support, so you'll have phones and tablets that can interact with documents as well. And I'm really trying to get undo and redo implemented as well. The ability to undo and redo is a core architectural concern from a document editing standpoint. So the idea when we bring in both of these things is to kind of solidify the two biggest risk factors or architectural implications for the entire project. Hopefully by the end of Q3, if we succeed in shipping both of these features and if they work really well, what I will then hopefully be able to do is start training a few other developers to understand the architecture I've set up in Super Editor, have those developers handle the day-to-day -day contributions, and move me a little more towards tech leadership rather than being the primary developer, the primary code writer. That's the ideal. We'll see if we get there. But these two features are kind of must-haves in my mind. So that's what we're eyeing for version 020 in Q3. Porting processing, that continues. The, the process of porting processing continues. I have this image up here, though, because I'd like to think we're almost down to the last puzzle piece. There's a huge number of APIs. And no, we're not nearly done implementing all the APIs. But a couple of things. I think we're very close to implementing the most important APIs. And in terms of the audio APIs, I don't know if we're ever going to implement those because that would involve a lot of platform concerns that go beyond graphics. If I can finish up the most important core visual APIs, then I'd like to clean up the code. I'd like to get it further documented. I'd like to get it further tested. And then here again, just like I mentioned for Super Editor, what I would like to do is bring in some other developers who want to fill out a lot of the remaining APIs, make sure they understand the ideas behind the structure of the project, and then operate more as a tech lead where I'm saying, okay, these are things that we will accept and work on for the project, and then I will review the PRs, make sure things are tested, and just kind of manage the process and only do occasional work on the code base. If I can move to that tech leadership position, both on Super Editor and Flutter Processing, then that means in Q4 of this year and beyond, I can start moving to other projects because then I'll go into a kind of tech leadership maintenance role on both of these, which is kind of the ideal for any such project because I don't want the rest of my life to be these two projects. There are other things in Flutter that need to be built and I can go build them. So as soon as we can stabilize these two projects, we can bring in more developers and have more of a community maintenance and extension effort. 
In terms of contracts, I'll be continuing with the mortgage company indefinitely. That could go for any number of months or years into the future. Uh, and I'm I'm hoping that the that the startup will grow a lot with its customer base and its revenue, and then will grow the apps. There there are already a few apps in their catalog. Hopefully that grows to dozens of apps. Hopefully we're servicing a lot of clients. And then there as well, to speak of tech leadership, I will be able to hire some developers and then lead that effort more so than do most of the coding. We'll see how that goes. But I've also entered into a contract with a, a vaping company where I will, that one actually is more of a leadership role. There's a second developer in the picture. So I'm coming in to set up the project, set up the standards. I'm going to figure out some of the technical details to do with wireless communication with the device. Uh, but I'm going to help that company deliver the very first version of their app at some point in Q3. And for me, that's enough projects. And so that rounds out Q3. So Q2 was Super Editor version 010. It was the continuation of Flutter processing with a number of coding challenges. It was development for a mortgage company. Now going into Q3, all that stuff remains plus a contract with a company in the vaping space. Uh, and that will probably be all I'm able to accomplish in Q3. Looking beyond Q3 for just a moment, if I can move to that tech leadership position on all the projects, then in Q4, maybe I can come back and do a bit more education. You know, those processing videos, there are a lot of them. They take up a lot of time. Once that project kind of comes to a close or stabilizes, I can move that effort back towards some traditional Flutter app education. Uh, and while we're here, why don't you folks tell me what it is you'd like to learn? If you think YouTube or the broader educational ecosystem is missing certain Flutter education topics, post them down below. The more detail you can provide, the better. You know, make it really clear what you, what you want to learn and how others aren't showing it and what you think should be available. And I can start to keep that in mind moving into Q4 when hopefully I'll have more time for those things. So that's the quarterly review for the halfway point for the super declarative channel and all my efforts here in 2021. I'll see you back with the regular videos next week, and we'll do this all over again in about three months. See you later.